Roger, Roger, check, check. Check, check, checkity, check. Welcome to the 200th podcast of Being James Bond. I'm your good buddy, as always, for 14 years now, head of section, the host of the Being James Bond podcast. And this is officially the 200th episode. Uh, And what am I going to talk about? Well, not much. I just want to talk about the fact that we've got 200 podcasts. so, yeah, I just noticed after my last uh, post that that was episode 199. So I figured, you know what? Let's mark the occasion uh, and let's talk about just where we've been and where we are. Um, one of the things I find really interesting about this is that uh, it, it took me many, many years to do 100 episodes and not very long to do the second hundred episodes uh honestly it's pretty spectacular so let's see my first podcast ever was on november 12th 2006 and it was literally like a week or two before the release of casino royale so i had been sort of planning and plotting being james bond for quite a while before that uh like a lot of people today you know, I was a, a I, I was about to say a young Bond fan, but honestly, well, I wasn't really that young. I was in my mid 30s, approaching my mid 30s, and I was sort of um, it, it was after 9-11, not right after 9-11, but 9-11 had happened. And, and as a result, I was out of work for a little while uh, and kind of struggling to find work. And I went back to school. Uh, I was always a few credits shy of getting my uh, bachelor's. So I decided to use the time to go back to school. Uh, and somehow during that time, uh, it, I went back and you know how it goes. Like, of course you go back to start again and they're like, oh, you need this many credits. And it took me about two years to finish. So I went to school um, almost full time, I think for about two years. Um, and and it's it was a great time in my life, frankly, because it was, you know, my head was very together. Uh, you know, they always say, you know, youth is wasted on the young. I was back in college, you know, in my mid thirties, or I was still, um, still young enough to enjoy it, but, um, you know, old enough to appreciate it. And suddenly I was like, you know, a sponge just wanting to learn. Um, and of course my James Bond kind of fandom was kind of kicking into high gear. Uh, you know, I, it, for years it, it had really gotten kind of serious where I was this really kind of hardcore fan. Uh, opening night, every time there was a new Bond movie, I would be there. Um, Dying of the Day had been the most recent film, uh, you know, not the, not the best, but um, but I, I it was a time where I was tinkering with the idea of you know like Bond is just such an incredible character, and I thought like you know well you know geez, uh, yeah, I mean how do you how could you possibly know all the things Bond knows? How could you have all this knowledge? Um, and then I kind of it kind of hit me. I, I don't think anybody's ever like written a book where they literally tried to focus on everything Bond shows expertise in, and then literally tries to explain that topic in in in, in some level of depth. And I that's when I said I'm going to write that book. You know, I'm going to do this book where I'm going to literally just kind of comb through everything Bond knows how to do. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. I literally went through it and, and tried to figure out every skill Bond seems to show. Uh, I mean, within reason, like, I, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to program a, a nuclear warhead. I'm not going to tell you how to, you know, um, but simply golf, scuba diving, uh, skiing, these skills that Bond obviously displays, uh, his gambling skills, his travel knowledge, uh, etc. So, and I, so I, again, I kind of wanted to get in deep into that and explore it. And that's how I ended up kind of creating being James Bond. And at the time, again, I, I was sort of focused on writing a book. And as I was sort of mapping it out, I discovered podcasting. I kind of discovered like, you know, a friend of mine was into it. I said, what's a podcast? And he sort of showed it to me. And I actually did one for his gaming podcast on the From Russia With Love video game. So, uh, yeah, so I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. This is going to be my media. And this is how I'll communicate these ideas. 
And uh, yeah, so being James Bond was born and I did my first podcast. And if you want to see me cringe, well, have a listen to my very first podcast. Welcome to the very first episode of Being James Bond. This is the episode where I introduce myself and I let you know what you can expect from these podcasts. Yeah, that's 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 hard to listen to. <laughs> uh, but you know, listen, uh, you know, like every creator, now you start someplace. You have to start somewhere, and that's all you can do. And 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 God bless. You know, I mean, you know, I have a lot of uh, respect for the young guys who are starting out today. Uh, creating and just kind of biting the bullet and doing it because uh, if you think it through too long you'll never you'll never do it uh, so yeah and I remember the early days you know it, it was a kind of a different thought process back then uh, every every podcast I did in the very early years was this kind of um, I mean it was essentially a chapter it was a whole book chapter in a podcast I would spend weeks you know uh, researching uh, putting it all together, weeks editing. I mean, it, it really got to be a, a bear. And, and I thought back then, I thought I was going to do a podcast a week. Um, you know, and that was just sort of Looney Tunes. But, um, you know, so it was, um, it, was, it, it was a challenge and a learning process for damn sure. You know, and I kind of realized, like, I mean, it, it, I learned the hard way because I would go, you know, I would come out swinging and then go weeks months without doing a podcast and people say hey dude what's up where, where is it uh, but you know it, again it was you just start you, just, you start doing um, the best you can and, and that's it and, and it uh, it all comes together uh, so yeah so the podcast went on for many years you know and and honestly I like I said back then the mentality was uh, that I need I, I couldn't put out a podcast without a good reason like I, I can't put out like half-ass work you know and somebody's gonna say what am I listening to now now the thinking is is more the opposite stay in touch with your people talk just talk you know talk about what's going on um, and it took me many years to get a hundred episodes my 100th episode and at the time I didn't even realize it was my 100th because I hadn't um, I wasn't labeling my podcast correctly now i kind of I, I went back and renumbered and and cleaned it up so uh it wasn't until my 105th episode that i realized i had done 100 uh my 100th episode was june 12th 2017 uh and it was talking it was actually a radio interview i did with a local uh station radio free brooklyn uh and i and i knew one of the guys there and he reached out and he says do you want to talk about uh the legacy of roger moore I said, of course so, um, and, and again, it wasn't even that long ago. So it kind of goes to show like just how much output I've kind of cranked out in the last couple of years. Uh, so yeah, so that was, uh, 2017, June of 2017 was me talking about Roger Moore. And, uh, that was my 100th episode. And, uh, yeah, between the reviews and the interviews, it's been very easy to crank out content, which is great because I feel like that's, um, you know, again, that that's how you sort of people. That's how people know you. Apparently, that's the uh, you know consistency is key. They say, and and I find that that's very true. I feel like, um, and even my YouTube channel. That's I I did videos very sparingly, and only in the last few years that I decided to get a little more serious with that. Um, and that's again been huge. Uh, I got my first one thousand viewers. Uh, kind of last summer, and I think I'm closing in on 4,000 right about now. I think it's like 3,800, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's again, it, it's 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 fun and it's great to be able to to talk to more people. It, it's, it's the easiest way to say it. Uh, so yeah, and of course, being James Bond has kind of morphed a little bit, and um, you know, I, I think because the hype around Bond 25 has been you know at a such a peak um with with its share of frustrations um i think it's kind of caused me to become kind of more of a film critic and a film reviewer uh and i, and I am kind of anxious to get more into the the bond stuff uh so but uh you know we'll get i'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more but uh, so, yeah, I mean, and it's been a great ride. It's been a fantastic ride. And honestly, I think in the back of my mind, if you asked me, you know, like if somebody asked me, why are you doing a podcast about the stuff that James Bond knows how to do? 
I would say, well, because nobody's done it before because these are interesting topics. But I think if I was sitting on a therapist couch, uh, the I would probably confess and say, well, I, I think it's kind of a, a way to get into sort of the broader bond community. I mean, there are there are hardcore fans out there who go to these gatherings and they go to events and you know, I, I don't know any of these people. So uh, it'd be nice to kind of have a way to sort of, you know, I kind of sneak in the side door and kind of have a little calling card and say, hey, well, I have a podcast, so uh, I should be allowed to go to this. And, um, you know, and, and that's kind of worked. It's kind of paid off. Uh, it, it's uh, it's definitely been a great window. It's I mean, it's wonderful now when I mean, last year I went to the Honor Majesty Secret Service uh, trip, which which was just, I, I mean, you've heard me talk about it. I mean, it was just over the top. Uh, and it was amazing that I'm now getting to meet people that I've sort of know I've known of them for quite a while. And rather than just walking up to them and saying, hey, hi, I'm, I'm a Bond fan and I like what you do. Uh, they already kind of know me now. So so I'm able to just walk up and say, hey, oh, my God, I love your work. And they say the same thing. And we're already engaging. So. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really been it, honestly it, it, like my motives for doing it have really paid off, you know, and I, I, I think I was actually pretty close to going to a premiere uh, <laughs> for, for the first time. Uh, but uh, we know we all know where that what that what happened with that. Um, so anyway, yeah. So like I said, this is uh, it's been 200 episodes and it's uh, it's it's been a hell of a ride. It's been a hell of a journey. And. And as opposed to what I did for my 100th, where I didn't even know I had one, I wanted to kind of kind of mark the occasion, and uh, and and just talk about the uh, the fact that it's been 200, and and that's it, you know. And I again, I've made incredible friends in this larger community. Uh, I I I can't say enough just how satisfying that part of this this whole journey has been. I mean, it's I mean that 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 is by far the best part in fact it, in some ways it's the kind of the only part i mean i i enjoy what i do i enjoy the um i enjoy the videos that we put out i enjoy the editing i enjoy uh the final product uh i enjoy communicating with other fans and and again it's great to have i mean i just did i'm recording this on uh friday i just did a live stream yesterday and you know, I did. A, I, I took part in the Zoom call that a couple of the Bond Bond people put together, which was which was a lot of fun, and it was a lot of Bond, you know, fans, people, and of course, it's great because they already know who I am. You know, I, I'm not introducing myself, you know, to people for the first time. So, you know, it just it just feels nice. You know, it's it's a it's a very friendly environment. It's like it's it's almost as like you're making friends before you've actually even met them. You know, we we were friends before we met. So, you know, it, it's just it's just really good. Uh, and again, I love James Bond. I love the books. I love the movies. So it's it's a fun. I mean, what better sandbox to play in? You know, I mean, this is this is our thing. And I just absolutely adore it. Um, and I again, it's going to keep on going. You know, I, I, I hope to do another hundred <laughs> and do another episode. Uh, I mean, it, honestly, it's so funny when I look back and I think like my first episode, I'm thinking like that was several apartments ago. Like I lived <laughs> a couple places since then, uh, you know, it, it's so it's, um, you know, it's it's again, it's just it's been a journey and it's been with me for the last 14 years of my life. And it's been spectacular. And I, And honestly, it's never been better. Uh, I'm, I'm having more fun doing this now than I ever have, you know, you know, 2020 hasn't exactly been a, a stellar year, uh, but I, re I can still remember doing uh, an episode for New Year's, just kind of doing a, a hello episode for, uh, when, you know, for, for New Year's at the end of 2019. And I said, you know, most people look back and say, good riddance to this year. I can't wait till next year. There's so much rotten stuff. And I said, not me. My 2019 was spectacular. I mean, I just, I loved it. And I, I don't know how I'll ever uh, match it. I mean, it was just fantastic in every way. Um, you know, and, and again, it's been a rough year, you know, for the whole world. But, uh, uh, but for me personally, uh, you know, doing being James Bond, I, I am still on that high. And I'm enjoying it very much. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I, and I just wanted to say thank you and say thank you to the people who listen and thank you to the people who watch the YouTube channel. And you know, I, again, I, I I wouldn't be doing this if, and it wouldn't be fun if it wasn't for you guys. So you've made it a lot of fun, and I and again, I love it and I appreciate it. So thank you. Uh, and where to go? You know, again, we like I said, this is a weird time for everyone. You know. Um, it's it's funny i literally just had a a, a tiny little little uh um what, what's the, what's the tiniest word for an argument you could possibly come up with i i somebody had i there was a po there was a an account i followed for, for inspirational quotes and this this one this quote happened to be uh this is just a pandemic it's not a competition to see who can accomplish more something to that effect uh to which I kind of took a little issue with it. I said, eh, that's kind of crummy advice. What, so what are you going to do? Just sit in the puddle and let this thing beat you? Or, or are you going to to seize this opportunity? Um, you know, frankly, I, I get almost frustrated, although that's not probably the best word. But, you know, when I, when I hear people just sort of moaning and groaning, I, and again, look, the, the whole world is suffering. This is not a good thing by any stretch. Um, you know, it, it's something that should be taken seriously. And, and as long as we're all doing our part, um, that's the best you can ask for. Um, so with that said, well, what are you going to do with the time? And, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, moaning and groaning that, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. And I, I just kind of say, you know, how many times did you say, oh, if I only had time, I would do this. You know, if I if I only could control my schedule, I would do X. Uh, well, this is it. This is so it. So, you know, again, I, I, I don't like to shoot my mouth off because, you know, my energy level fluctuates sometimes uh, I can I can get on a high and, um, you know, and then then suddenly and it's not like, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I don't get depressed or anything, but just my energy level will, you know, again, I'll have peaks and it's sometimes hard to keep it up. So I don't want to over talk. But honestly, for the last, you know, for a little while now, I've been waking up at six o'clock in the morning. I've kind of trained myself so that when the alarm goes off, I literally stand up. Like I don't lay in bed. I don't hit the snooze. I stand up and I find that. And I stand up for a minute. I, I literally have my, my echo. Uh, one alarm goes off at six and then another one goes off at 601. I get up, I stand up for one minute. And then when I hear the second alarm, I, 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 allow, I allow myself to lay back down. Uh, like I don't have to just jump right to my chair, uh, but just that act of standing up, I kind of feel like it wakes me up enough that now as I go to lay back down, I'm not going to conquer right back out. I can kind of just get my bearings a little bit and then get up. And I kind of find that by about 6:20, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm doing some writing. Um, for all the people who say, where the hell is volume two? Uh, I, I am literally sitting down at my desk every single morning and for at least an hour, hour and a half, uh, I'm working at, uh, volume two. Uh, and it's, and it's a slow process. Cause I kind of, I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist. Um, so I can, I mean, sometimes I'll sit for an hour, hour and a half and I have about a page, you know, to, to, you know, I, that, that's all I've got. And, and frustratingly, it's not even as if the page is not written. This is me going back to my outline and fleshing out and getting, getting everything correct. And then, you know, I get about a page, maybe a page and a half every day. But you know what? That's how you get things done. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So, you know, I've been saying for years that this book is like 80% done. It's been, and it has been. Uh, it, but, but again, I got to take that that pile of clay and now get it down to it's not done until every detail is correct so um so yeah and then after i do that i do some exercise uh my where i'm the house i where i live it's on a hill uh and i you know i'm either doing exercise exercise in the house or i will do i just walk all the way to the bottom of the hill and i walk back up again and it's you know so i so i'm so again, I'm trying to get active, trying to get more because because Lord knows the schedule leading right up until Bond 25. I mean, I was just my my nose was to the grindstone almost round the clock. And people who, who, you know, I'm close to will tell you that 
honestly, I was having moments where I was forgetting things. Uh, I, I would just sort of lose track of stuff. And honestly, because my brain was just on 24 seven that I couldn't even really think straight. Um, and again, I was kind of just, just sprinting towards the release of the film. So I think, um, you know, for one, one of the reasons why, I, you know, when I heard the eight month delay, uh, I think my response was slightly unbecoming because, again, my whole mindset was just so focused. It was laser focused on this uh, to the point where I was overstressed. And then when it, when I just heard like, oops, you know, forget it. Never mind. It's like so. Uh, so, yeah, so I, so I, I do some writing. And then by the time I finish, you know, by, by the time I finish my exercise, I sit down to my desk and I do work work. And um, you know, again, luckily, my my uh, employment allows me to work from home. I was working from home most of the time anyway. So I kind of feel like this um, just making it 100 percent in some ways has allowed me the freedom to take 100 percent control over my schedule. Um, I mean, even on the weekends, I would pack my laptop and go to my girlfriend's and get set up over there and keep keep on working. Um, and even that, I mean, as frustrating it is that we can't see each other, um, the silver lining is that, again, I don't have to schlep everything around. I can sort of stay on my routine. So, yeah. So, again, I, I kind of feel like this whole thing, it, it's going to sort of allow you to see a part of yourself. And you're going to say, well, look, you know, all those things I wanted to do. Was I really busy or was I just a little lazy? Um, and Lord knows I am not getting on any soapbox about lazy because I, I, I certainly have my bouts with, with uh, being lazy. Um, but again, I, I feel like, well, it's either make that just fess up and say you're too lazy to finish your book. You're too lazy to do exercise or take this opportunity to do something. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I hope that people listening will kind of take that and, and say, you know, yeah, this is this is. I mean, a golden opportunity to to do something. I remember even years ago, I think when I was writing the first one, frankly, I had debated on like, I'm going to rent a ski house. You know, it's going to be like The Shining, except I'm, instead of going nuts, I'm actually going to finish the book. I'll rent like a ski house for like a week or two, just myself, you know, groceries, you know, get onto a schedule, write this book. Um, of course, that doesn't materialize, but now this thing has been thrust upon us. And now it's, again, now you have that sort of, schedule where you can do whatever you want so um anyway so i hope this will find people you know i hope this finds you well and i hope you're keeping good spirits again i think another reason why um you know i decided to, to do you know just my 200th bs episode again it's really more because i want people to you know again we're all sort of stuck at home so i'm happy to sort of generate extra content um, while I'm kind of, you know, remarking on 200 podcasts, um, and yeah, again, I, I just want to keep the lines of communication open and, and let everybody kind of know, like, you know, look, we're all in this together. You're not alone. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to go through things alone, but Lord knows none of us are alone in this. We're all, I mean, it's not just our surrounding area. It's not just the country. I mean, it is the world. The whole world is in this mess. And, and as much as I worry even about uh, the other side effects of this thing, which is the economy, of course, uh, I, I again, I also take heart in the idea that, well, we're all in this together. It, we're not fighting. It, it's, it's not like one country is in trouble and the other countries would take advantage or vice versa. Um, we're all in this mess together. So I think everyone is going to want to get back on track quickly. So I, I do think that once this thing subsides, uh, again, as long as we're smart and do what we need to do to make it go away, I think once it goes away, I, it, it, I think we'll be back on track pretty, well, you know, not super quick, but I think we're going to get there because everyone is motivated to get this thing back on track. Everyone wants their life to go back to normal. Uh, so for every, you know, as much as you're, you're dying to get to a restaurant again and order a meal, there's a restaurateur who wants to get back to work. So, so again, I, I think we're all going to kind of snap back relatively quickly. Um, 
So there you go. I guess I'll leave it at that. Again, it's uh, I, I'm just kind of excited for for 200 episodes. I had a little time, so I figured I would talk about it and um, hopefully give you something to listen to that's uh, remotely interesting. <laughs> Again, I kind of feel like I just spent the last uh, 26 minutes interviewing myself, but uh, you know, I figured why not? <laughs> I would indulge a little bit. Um, and plus, it's uh, it's Good Friday, it's a holiday, it's Easter weekend, and it's going to be bizarre. I, I, I don't know if I'm seeing anybody this weekend, to tell you the truth. Uh, I did see my parents uh, fairly recently, but now they've had some friends who've come down with it, so they're, now they're getting a little, a little sketchy about it. So I, I think I might just be uh, spending the holiday weekend by myself, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I can work in a Skype call or a Zoom call here and there with the family. Uh, and some friends, you know, I got friends who are ready to do a little, little zoom double dates or something. Uh, all right. So listen, I'll wrap up and I will just say, uh, I think I'll put this out on Monday. So I hope you had an enjoyable weekend, even though if it was another, another quiet weekend at home. Uh, but again, you know, face the week and, and, and just say, I'm going to, you know, rather than let this thing beat me, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm going to just do the things I want to do and, and do things on my own schedule, do things my way for a little while and uh, see where that leads you. See, you know, maybe uh, maybe you'll come out of this with a side hustle. You know, maybe you'll start a book or a podcast or uh, an Instagram or something or uh, or maybe you'll start the, your little side business that you would always thought about. And maybe by the time you get back to work, work, you got a little side hustle going on. So. I'll leave it at that. I'm your good buddy, head of section. Again, 14 years of the Being James Bond podcast and honestly going stronger than ever. And uh, like I said, thank you so much for being part of it. It's uh, it's meant everything and it makes it all worthwhile because if you're not watching and listening, what am I doing here? So thank you so much. Again, your good buddy, head of section, Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. Loving every minute of it. And uh, I will see you very soon. Take care.